was going to make this uh, a longer list, like maybe 10 or 15 sagas, but I didn't want it to be um, overbooked. Obviously, with the release of the Northman trailer, there is some interest in the stories that the film might be based on. Now, only those on the creative team are aware of which sagas they pulled from for inspiration. But from the trailer, there's definitely room for educated guesses with respect to its themes, subject matters, inspiration, and so on. The major elements that we can get from the trailer that are in common with the sagas are... Well, obviously, there's the story of Amleth himself, but beyond that, we can see that revenge, fate, magic, rituals, and even berserkers are in the film. It's clear that the film's story is based on the story of Amleth, but it's also clear that the film is changing several aspects of the story and drawing from a number of other sources for its narrative. And I've boiled this down to seven texts that are worth going through if you want to go into the film with an informed familiarity with the source material. First up is our boy Saxo Grammaticus, the Danish historian bishop, known for his nine-book history recording the history of the Danes. And by nine, I mean 16, but the first nine are the ones that are relevant to pre-Christian history. These nine books are a major source for understanding both the history and the folklore of Scandinavia, especially that of modern-day Denmark. Now, whether or not this film will take place in what was then known as Jutland, which is within modern-day Denmark, remains to be seen. But this is where Saxo sets the story of Amleth, which is where the film most directly seems to be taking its inspiration. The same story would also inspire Shakespeare's Hamlet, which is also worth checking out. Clever lad, that Shakespeare. My personal preferred publication of Saxo's History of the Danes is this version, with commentary from H.R.E. Davidson. The story of Amleth starts in the middle of book three and goes on to book four. The total legend is less than 20 pages in my copy, so it is a pretty quick read. It's just a bit of a slog because Saxo's writing style is, um, well, it's, it's very medieval, very dramatic, very opinionated, very Christian, and quite sensational. But if you're along for that ride, it's also a lot of fun. And in addition, his, uh, his side rants can be quite entertaining and, we'll just say, informative of how people thought at the time that he was writing in the 12th century. <laughs> Every female vow is stolen away by changes of fortune or evaporates with shifting seasons. A woman's reliability stands on slippery soles and is weakened by chance accidents. He's a trip. <laughs> let's, let's move on. Uh, the second saga that I want to point out is the saga of King Prof Kraki. Now, this is one of my personal favorite sagas, and it contains a ton of legendary events, such as werebears, droger, elves, a necromancer, a ruthless half-deer man, a giant boar, and a noble king with a court divided between trusty champions, unpredictable berserkers, and his trusty pupper, who is a good doggo and worthy of head pets. The saga opens with the brutal murder of a king by his brother and two children who escape to safety and seek revenge for their father's death. It's an obvious parallel to Saxo's story of Amleth, but it's a bit more magical, and it appears that the film is drawing inspiration from this legend, so it's worth checking out for a number of reasons. The opening story relevant to the film is only about 10 pages, but the rest of the saga is obviously a ton of fun. And it's one of the legendary records of berserkers, both as the violent warriors often out of control and separately as warriors venerating a sort of bear spirit. Both iterations of berserker uh, make an appearance in this saga and even compete with one another. So in as much as the film is dealing with berserkers, this is definitely a record to check out. The third saga on our list is the saga of Eric the Red, which often comes in publications with the saga of the Greenlanders, which are both quick and easy reads. These are the main sagas which point to the Vikings making landfall in North America and what happened to their expeditions. The saga includes the horrific tale of shipworms slowly destroying a boat, spelling doom for those aboard. It also includes the story of Eric the Red, a man who, while skilled in combat and loved his family, wasn't exactly a people person. It also tells of his offspring, including the record of Leif Erikson's famous settlement in the Americas and the bloody tale of the voyage of his sister, Freydis Eriksdotter. But it is also the saga with the greatest detail of a Sether woman and the practice relating to it. It's only a few pages, but those of you who are interested in learning about Sether 
and what little historical information we have on it. This is a must read. Putting the Heimskringla on this list is, uh, it's cheating a bit, as it's Snorri's anthology of several sagas, all of which are valuable in their own way, but it's worth mentioning here as there are two sagas worth reading contained within it. The Yngling saga is a valuable mythological source, but it also contains stories of the first kings of Sweden. Among them is that of Fjolnir, the likely namesake of the villain in the Northmen, who dies after urinating into a vat of mead and then promptly drowning after drunkenly falling in. There isn't much more to the story of Fjolnir in the Heimskringla, so it's a bit of an honorary mention, but the Heimskringla also contains the story of Hakon the Good, which contains the most detailed record of ritual that we have, and will offer a ton of context for rituals that you might see on screen and that that heathens practice today. It's also a very interesting story regarding the conflict of a Christian king ruling over a very pagan population. Next up is the saga of the Volsungs, which is probably the most famous of the sagas, so anyone wanting a general familiarity with the sagas is going to want to hit this one up. This is the saga that contains the famous story of Sigurd the Dragon Slayer that inspired later works such as The Hobbit. The saga of the Volsungs has a through line of fate and is a great example of how people grapple with the concept of fate in these stories. When told that the hoard of gold that he has won will be the death of him, Sigurd replies, if he knew he would never die, he would ride home without the treasure. But since he knows he will die anyway, he can die wealthy. Number six on this list is Eyjol Saga, which is one of the longer sagas on this list. And Eyjol, the main character of this saga, is a warrior poet who is famously credited with writing the My Mother Told Me poem at around seven or eight years old. His adventures put him in several rather precarious situations, and he gets himself into a rivalry with the ruthless king Eric Bloodaxe. But Eyjol's saga is on this list for its details on berserkers. Eyjol's grandfather, Kvildolf, is an old berserker who is represented a little differently than berserkers often are. He's a landowner, a family man, and fiercely independent. But his style of independence gets him in a little bit of trouble. And we see his berserker rage, along with descriptions on how it works. Another longer saga that I want to bring up is Njal's saga, in part because it's widely considered one of the best of the family sagas. It goes into great detail about the legal system of Iceland and the consequences, or sometimes the seeming lack of consequences, of breaking Icelandic law. And it's possible that the story of the Northmen will take place in Iceland. As such, Njal's saga is going to be the best saga to help with that context of place. But Njal's saga deals with a major theme of the Northmen, which is revenge. Njal's saga might best be summarized as an ever-expanding torrent of revenge killings on top of revenge killings that descends into a chaotic nightmare, consuming several families. Even those who try to settle these matters peacefully get pulled into the various revenge plots. It's, it's a far more grounded story than the legendary or romantic sagas that I mentioned earlier. So those looking for a saga that deals less with the supernatural and more with the historical setting of Iceland, you'll find this saga to your liking, even if the story does sometimes drift from established history. But most importantly, it contains the story of Sam, the bestest doggo in the sagas who deserves all of the headpats. I'll end this by saying that there are a ton of sagas out there. And if there's one that you think would make a great addition to this list, leave it in the comment section below. They have impressive variety between them, and they are great stories. But this is a good collection to get a decent understanding on what you might see in the film based on what I saw in the trailer. I'll also say that from the perspective of a practicing heathen, this is going to be a really good starter list of sagas to get you familiar with the records that we have available. And if you snag all of the sagas on this list, you'll have a pretty decent heathen library. In fact, Saxo Grammaticus's History of the Danes and Snorri's Heimskringla alone have a wealth of information relevant to the practicing heathen. But with that, hail to my patrons for making this content possible. It's good to have people at your back. The like and subscribe button have become berserkers, and clicking on them will spin them into a rage, and it's pretty hilarious to watch. Ring the bell to get notified for more heathen content, and remember to find a way or make one.
Bonus, the saga of Igil and Asmund has spear catching, and Njal's saga has spear catching as well, but the guy catches the spear with his leg, yanks it out, and hurls it back. Not quite the same thing, but still badass as fuck. 